In this video, we'll discuss about the inheritance shown by duplicating genes. Duplicating genes are again the genes which are located on different loci of the same chromosome or different chromosomes. To understand this, we'll take an example of fruit shape in capsula bursa. In capsula bursa, there are two shapes which we get. One is triangular and this is the dominant one and the other is elongated. Now, as we said, there are two genes which are controlling this and duplicating means both these genes have independently the same phenotype or express the same phenotype. Only thing is or an only condition is they should be present in their dominant form. Triangular is by T gene and the other one is D. There are two genes. That means if it is T and other T could be dominant or recessive and the other gene is in its recessive form, then the fruit shape is going to be triangular. If other situation is taken, that means T is lower case, both T's are lower case and D is dominant, other D could be dominant or recessive. Then also the color or sorry, the shape is triangular. If T and D both are together, then also the shape is triangular. Only situation when the shape is not triangular or the shape is elongated is when the T's are also recessive and the D's are also recessive. In this situation, the shape will be elongated. That means both the genes T and D are responsible for showing only one type of trait or phenotype that is the triangular shape of the fruit. Now to understand what ratio will we get, let us start with a pure line and pure line could be TT with DD. The shape is going to be triangular as whether it is T or D, they express the same phenotype. If we cross it with lowercase t and dd, this also is going to be triangular. This is our parent generation. In F1, this particular plant will produce gamete having one T capital that is dominant and small d, recessive d. Here, it's going to be recessive t and capital D or dominant D. That means in F1 of first generation, we will get heterozygous for T and heterozygous for D. These also will be triangular. Now, here we started with only T dominant for one phenotype that is triangular, only D dominant that is same type of phenotype, both together also are responsible for the same type of phenotype. If we want to show the ratio or get the ratio in F2, we'll have to self these F1 members. So on selfing, what is the ratio that we are going to do? Without making a cross also, we can interpret, but let us first make a cross, unit square, and then we'll see why we were able to interpret it in that easier manner. In typical Mendelian dihybrid cross, we said the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. In this case, the 9 are both genes dominant. This is a dihybrid cross. In these three, one is dominant, anyone, and in the other three, the other one is dominant. And as we said, whether T is dominant, or D is dominant, that would be here in these two ratios. And if both are there, that would be in none. That means our ratio should be 15 is to 1. But let us cross check it. If we talk of heterozygous for both, that is 
from F1 we are taking them and self in them, then they will produce the same type of gametes. Let us make this punit square and write down their genotypes that would help us count or calculate the ratio. Capital T with capital D, capital with lowercase, lowercase T with D and here both are recessive. Here also same type of gametes, capital T and D, capital lowercase D, lowercase T and dominant D and here again recessive. Now on crossing or fertilization, this is going to be T, T, D, D, all capital. Both T is capital, one D dominant. Here T and T, both Ds are capital. Here T and lowercase, D and D, T and T, D and D, capital, capital, both Ds recessive. Capital T, lowercase, one dominant D, one recessive. Capital T, small t, small d, small d. Here capital T, small t, both d's are dominant. Capital T and small, capital D and small. Here both t's are small but both d's are capital. Small t and small t, capital D and small d. And here capital and small, capital and small. This is capital T, small, both D's are recessive. Here, T's are small, capital D and small and in this case, all are recessive. Let us see what will be the fruit shape in them. We said, if T is dominant, fruit shape is going to be triangular. If D is dominant, fruit shape is going to be triangular. And if both are dominant together, then also the fruit shape is going to be triangular. So this will be triangular, same here, here also T and D dominant, so triangular, triangular, here also, here only T's are dominant, D's are recessive, but T alone also gives the same phenotype. So this will also be dominant, this is also dominant, here T is dominant, so this will be triangular, 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 here T is recessive, but D is dominant. D also shows the same fruit shape that is triangular. In this case also triangular. Here also T and D both are there. So triangular. T is dominant. So triangular. D is dominant. So same. In this case it is all recessive. So this is the only one which is going to be elongated. Now this is the same thing which we were talking about earlier. Without even plotting this punit square we could have interpreted the ratio. Because in a typical dihybrid cross, when we write this ratio, we say 9 have both dominant. This would be in that 9. This would be in that 9. And these 3 have 1 out of the 2 dominant. Say for example, this one. T is dominant. Here, D is dominant. So that would come into the other 3. And this last one is where all the alleles are recessive. So this ratio which we get here as the ratio of our duplicating gene that is 15 is to 1 is a modified form of the same typical Mendelian dihybrid ratio that is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. These have combined to give same type of phenotype and the only one which gets which is in this corner has only the recessive one so here the fruit shape is going to be elongated. So 15 is to 1 ratio is what we get in duplicating gene because both the genes they are responsible or they are showing the same type of phenotype or character.